Hey Zook family, it's Sunday, and that means, as you know, it's my favorite time of the week. I get to catch up with an inspiration for me, Ron Nicoli out in Las Vegas. Ron, how have you been this week, dude? Good, good. Uh, you know, Vegas is uh, Vegas is starting to reopen. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but uh, June 4th, we've got a lot of casinos that are going to be opening their doors. Uh, driving the Strip earlier today, a lot of like the barricades and things that were out in front of some of the entrance ways have now been removed. So it feels like everyone is amping up for some sort of opening, and, you know, based on capacity, et cetera. But it, it looks like people are excited to get back to work. Will you will you get to go and see my favorite waterfall this weekend? I mean, I, I, I'm kind of hoping to get that shot one day. Yeah, I, I was funny. Uh, I, I actually read an article today that uh, they've actually programmed three new shows. So three new, three new shows uh, for the Bellagio uh, water uh, fountain show thing is going to be kicking off. Uh, they didn't say exactly when, but it's actually an article that popped up. So it's, I'm, I'm curious to see what these three new shows are. Dude, I, I, I'm going to get my designer to take the the famous shot from Ocean's Eleven and superimpose our faces because uh, we can't do it in person right now. So I'm just going to get that as a preemptive uh, build up for that big moment where we can do it together. I think that'd be fun. That, that's definitely something to post, right? And then I guess the hope is one day we can actually do that shot in real, right? Yeah, yeah 100% did, 100%. Uh, I noticed you, you've gone with a different background this week. Yeah, it's cool, man. I think you know, I've been in the Zook office, it's been MCOs, we're starting to get prepared to reopen. I thought I'd bring us to, to Fuhu, which is our vibe dining restaurant. We got some amazing graffiti by a local Malaysian graffiti artist called Kenji Chai. Um, and we do a modern twist on Asian favorite foods. We have one that's inside Results for Genting Sky Avenue Mall, and we have a Fuhu Shack takeaway that is inside the theme park. And whilst we're building up to reopening, we're starting to do takeaway and delivery and stuff, so it's exciting times. And you'll be opening one in Las Vegas as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it'll, it'll be part of the, the Zoot Group uh, portfolio in Las Vegas, uh, hopefully, hopefully sometime next summer. Anyway, we can't wait to send Fuhu across the globe to Vegas, that'd be awesome. But let's roll into this week's conversation run. I really enjoyed looking about the campaign last week and we've just shown a cheeky teaser of a Kygo campaign that you shot that we'll discuss this week. But before we do, I really enjoyed your career change as Nicky Romero's hairdresser last week. And um, I'm gonna throw you under the bus here and I know that you've got a, Another story from your days with Virgil Abloh, which many people will know as a super high profile designer, um, obviously the curator of Off White, but also a DJ as well. So feed us into that one, Ron. Uh, so we were doing the, the 2017 campaign. And again, obviously Virgil's, Virgil's a guy that, you know, I obviously respect and admira admiration for him. I mean, you know. Obviously, it takes a lot, I think, to get me in a position of being starstruck. And he's one of those type of guys. You know, I've always been really interested in fashion and design and, you know, honestly, bringing him in as a resident because, again, you know, his his art is is fashion. His art is design. But I think there's a certain passion for music, you know, call it call it a call it a, you know, more than a hobby. But again, I think obviously more of a second love to what he's doing on the design side. So. Super excited that he, he made the decision to do some shows in Vegas with us. And and obviously it was probably the most um, scary, you know, when you think of uh, anxiety of going into a campaign shoot, one of the more anxiety positions to be in. Cause you're, I remember even the lead up to it, there was a lot of conversations with this team. And again, we had, you know, stylists and we had clothing that we had pulled for the other artists. But this is a guy who's a real designer. You know, this is a guy who is working with Nike, doing collaborations, Off-White is just, popping off and this is obviously pre Louis Vuitton men's but at this point he's, he's just huge and so you're having these conversations with his team about wardrobe and it's a it's a weird conversation to have because you can have that conversation with pretty much any other DJ on the roster and even if they have their own eclectic style you can work with them but you're talking to a man who designs clothes you're talking to a man who's doing Paris Fashion Week and, and it's you know having the biggest shows and you're having a conversation about clothing. And we we treaded very lightly on those conversations. I remember even telling the stylist that was working with us, I was like, let me kind of lead these conversations with this team just because, again, we're, we weren't necessarily going to be forceful. We weren't going to be in a position to send him mood boards for what we were looking for. This is a guy who dresses some of the, the biggest celebrities in the world. Uh, so the feedback to us was he's going to style himself 
and bring his own wardrobe. All right, perfect. Definitely not pushing back on that. Whatever, whatever he would like to do, we're happy he's participating, you know? And we understand he was busy. So he shows up to the suit and he shoot and he has a, a suitcase. And we, we had like this kind of artist lounge that we had set up, had some light amenities and we had a, a wardrobe that we had pulled. There was, was actually a lot of great brands that actually participated in providing us with wardrobe, Levi's and this brand feature and Adidas. So we had pretty much, it looked like a shop when you walk in it. So we, he comes in and he's in a black hoodie and just some, some jeans and some Nikes. And uh, the girl who was working for me, who was a stylist, he goes, he comes in and she, she's not really talking to him. She got him a beverage and make him feel comfortable. And she goes, uh, what should I do? And I go, well, he has a suitcase with him. Maybe, maybe see what he has in there. Maybe you need to steam it or prep it. So he asked, she asked and he goes, yeah, all of my stuff is in the suitcase. So he opens up the suitcase and the only thing that's in there is an Apple laptop. That's it. So she comes back to me and goes, Ron, there's nothing in the suitcase. And I'm like, and I'm, I'm assuming the conversation is there's nothing that she thinks works, which now my frustration is, well, there's got to be something that can work. And she Just goes, no, work no, with it. Work with it. Right, right, right. And she goes, no, there's nothing in the suitcase. And so I, I walk <laughs> back there and he's sitting there and he's essentially getting his set ready for the night because he's actually DJing that night with us after, after the shoot. And you see the suitcase there and the suitcase is empty. So obviously now I'm understanding like he didn't, there's, there's a laptop, that's it. So um, so we asked the question, we said, hey, um, do you have any anything that you want to, to wear? And it came down to us literally steaming his hoodie. So the black hoodie that he's in the photos in, we, he took that off, had a white t-shirt underneath and that was, that was his two books. He essentially, he came in character for the shoot. He had a white t-shirt, which we shot with, and he had a black hoodie, which we shot with. Um, it was awkward. It was one of these moments where, you, yet again, this this guy could have worn whatever he wanted. He would have came in, in like a chicken suit and we would have shot him. It was Virgil. But, so again, we're, we're kind of in like this, there's a little bit of a weird ecosystem going on at this point. And then we get to the Q and A. And keep in mind, we had been doing about 30 of these shoots. So we get to the Q and A and we had these scripts and to keep in mind, we had used one particular script for Virgil that was more specific. We wanted to get to the roots of, about him as a designer and his passions and growing up in Chicago and going to school in Milwaukee. So we had this whole thing that was based around fashion. But again, we were doing like 30 of these things. You know, we were, we were pounding pretty much one shoot out every day and someone grabbed the wrong script. And the script was more of a traditional like DJ script where you're asking about like touring and you're asking about producing music. And like the beginnings are all very introductory. It's, it's very conversation, but then it gets into questions that are more specific to the craft. And all of a sudden we hear the question and you see him and we realize it's the wrong script. And again, now this is almost like another moment of just feeling anxiety and comfortable. And again, we're, you know, like we've said before, it's like when you get into these situations on set, what you want to do is you want to, you want to pivot. But this is a really hard pivot because now we have identified that we literally are using the wrong script to, to create the conversational interview. And, and keep in mind, we would use these interviews around property. Like you're in the, you're staying in the room on the TV comes up this, this kind of conversational interview, you know, and we're using the sound bites and stuff. And it, it, it just was such an awkward moment. And then again, we pivot and we, we switch. And, and again, it's, it's one of the things where I, looking back, I felt like we probably didn't get the best interview we could, especially at that point. And, and again, you know, you, he had just flown in and I believe he had actually come from New York Fashion Week. It was like one of these things where he had come from New York Fashion Week, was peppering in this shoot because it's all that could work. And then he was gonna go DJ uh, at the club that night. So you've got all of these kind of variables working against you. And again, was a, a little bit of a, of a slip up on our part. We pivoted, but again, looking back, I really wish I would have been able to get more of a, a deeper dive in that interview, especially because when you look at how much he's even grown since then, uh, again, he, he becomes probably one of the most iconic fashion people in the last 20 years. They do, you know, these things happen and, and you recover from it. And I'm sure if he's got good humor, he'll take it in good stead. Um, I, I went uh, to Yao Yao, which is a yogurt place here on a day we booked uh, Arkham Knights, who's 
friends of ours, great trance DJs, and, and I've had people look at one white face and go, hey, you must be the DJ for tonight. And you're thinking, no, that's the other white guy. You know, you, you get all sorts of slip ups and things happen and it's cool. But man, I love these stories. It, it's very, it brings a down to earth feel into what you do for a living. And it's great to find out, especially for people to know not only that mistakes happen, but how do you pivot your way back out of it? Um, I've invited Alex, our, our head of marketing here from Malaysia. He's got a question he wants to ask you and, and see what we can learn that can probably guide us nicely into the Kygo segment. Sounds good. Hey Ron, it's Alex here from Zoo Genting. Uh, I wanted to check with you, how do you put together different components that you need for a marketing campaign so you hit the ground running? Uh, so when, when you're building out a campaign, you know, the way I always look at it is you, you want to understand kind of the A to Z. You want to understand like a 360 perspective. And, and a lot of times during the kind of planning phase, I, I like to include anyone that's going to have a touch point on the campaign. I like to include them in the conversation because sometimes when you create these silos where like the video guy or let's say the, the, the video or photography team, they're coming in to do something. But sometimes when they don't understand the, the execution or the end point, you sometimes... Again, if they, they care about their craft, they're going to give you great product, right? They're going to give you something great to put out there. But I always like them being part of the understanding of it, you know? And what I mean by that is making sure that everyone that's on set is, is taking an active role in understanding how the content is coming in and the use and implementation of content. And, and in my mind, when, when you kind of treat it that way, I feel like everyone always elevates their game. You know, it's like, you know, I used to, you used to make this comment, you know, we look at traditional in, in Las Vegas and we talk about billboards and we talk about, I've got this billboard here and it's going to get you, you know, 50,000 impressions a month. Right. And, and there's value to that. You know, the guy who took that photo was excited about those impressions. Now you start looking at some of the digital collateral online and you look at with the proper participation. Let's think about it. I can, I can go to my staff and, and as, as marketing ambassadors, have 50 people put out that content and because of their following and engagement now maybe i get a hundred thousand impressions and it's it's essentially if done right it's instant gratification but again it's it's from the first process explaining the importance dissecting the use you know again it's i, I always call it creating content with purpose you understand why you're doing it you understand who's implementing it you're understanding who's going to help you a voice in it and you're understanding what that goal and final result is. And if it all plays together, now you come out of it with a situation where anybody who's on set takes a lot of pride in seeing that finished product. They and again, them. it's safety netting too. It's like you want to have a lot of different assets. Like I always overshoot because right. you can't go back, you know. But and sometimes sometimes the stuff that you you did messing around or the throwaway footage ends up becoming the footage you use. But again, yeah. it's I think it's always having complete strategy. Okay. Thank you so much. Right. Ron, thanks so much for answering that. And we'll get some more questions from Alex as the weeks go on. Now, this week's campaign is a special one. It's visually stunning. And uh, it's using one of the best known artists in the world, who's not just a dance artist, but crosses really seamlessly through to commercial music as well. Obviously, needs little introduction, Kygo. Tell us about this. Uh, so this was a concept that we had talked about for, I think, a little bit over a year. You know, when, when Kygo came to the property, uh, the conversation was, how do we do something unique and interesting with Kygo? And again, he's very, very musically talented. So, you know, knowing and understanding um, his abilities on a piano, we were trying to think, how can we do something on property that was going to, again, amplify um, and, and do something that was a little bit different outside of nightlife? You know, normally... Normally we're, we're playing around with some nightlife videos that are the very in the club. And we thought to ourselves, you know, with his style and ability, you know, you look at, you look at through history, some of the, the more, you know, impactful icons from a perspective of being composers and producers and such. And I just thought there was something meaningful to seeing him in that setting playing a piano. So what we did is we, we worked with the resort. And again, the, the resort has had a show there. Uh, Le Rev, and it's been there since the opening, and it's 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 a really a really amazing show, you know. And, and the thing is, is it's it's a universal language show. You can walk into that show and be from anywhere in the world, and, and you're able to take it in, and it's it's going to create an emotion. And they gave us the ability to use that theater, 
and they gave us the opportunity to position performers of that show around and synchronize that with uh, the, the song he's playing on the piano. And again, it was one of the probably one of the more meaningful shoots I got to work on because of the artistic, how heightened the artistic ability was on it. You know, because again, you always come into these with a little bit of anxiety. And I remember, I actually, I actually pretty much spent the night in the theater the night before, uh, because again, I was just trying to understand angles and positions. And and again, you're trying to understand these kind of movements and capture points that existed in there. And it was a pretty foreign space. Like in my time, we didn't have a lot of opportunity to go in there and film in that space. Uh, it was a very, not in a bad way, but a very protected space. You know, it's it's a very unique. A show and theater in the round, and and the ability to go in there and do that is is very very meaningful to me, and honestly to the team. Uh, and again, from all the vantage points, from you know up high, and and essentially you're seeing a lot of shots in there that are, are focused even on a ground level and eye level. Uh, a lot of a lot of different takes, a lot of different resets, and and again, the the team from the show was amazing to work with because they they continued to reset. And again, they they had done a show the night before, and they had a show that night, so. Uh, a lot of times when these things come together, it really is having people that share the same artistic vision. You know, these these were people that were performers and dancers and acrobats that when we sat there and went over the treatment with them, they were excited. They were excited to be part of it. And then you see Kaigo, who were, were, were dreaming this thing up that, you know, when you think about the fact that it's a group of, in theory, nightlife guys that are going out and dreaming this up. And, and at that point, we had had the credibility of the property because they knew we were going to pull this together and the finished product was just completely amazing. And, and it was a great way of showing uh, a proper integrated resort, you know, the ability to, to work together as a team to put out content that not just highlighted uh, an amazing residency for the property, but highlighted the property and highlighted a show that it essentially has become a very legendary iconic show in Las Vegas. So super meaningful to be able to pull these kind of pieces together in a, a very artistic, creative way. Uh, in my mind, it's still one of the, the the better, obviously with bias, better residency type of artist videos that's been released in Vegas. So really, really meaningful to me to be part of that. Let's check it out. Wow, Ron, that's pretty special. I mean, to integrate both piano, water, aqua, acrobatics is pretty special, something that you can't easily forget. And I can see why it was such a, a showstopper. And using the professional acts inside an uh, integrated resort makes total sense because you're cross-selling the different dimensions of entertainment that exist within the resort. Something we really look forward to when you open in Vegas because obviously you've got a huge performance hall, you have a huge amount of entertainment assets, so it's super exciting. I just want to take note, I really enjoyed the interview with Connor Burns last week. Um, very nice touch, amazing background to the set. But there were some incredible insights into overcoming adversity from Connor, and I think that's a, a super nice touch. And you personally wanted to dedicate that set to someone who's meant something to you, correct? Yeah. Um, so there was a there was a, a an odd odd situation that actually occurred. And, you know, I come from a very small town in Ohio and, you know, I, I don't necessarily talk about it much. You know, it, you know, Vegas has been my home for 20 years now. So when I when I think about where I come from, you know, I definitely never not represented Ohio or Youngstown, Ohio. But 
you know, it, it doesn't come up anymore. You know, people who know me over the last 20 years identify Vegas as my hometown. But, you know, I, I remember being, it was actually, I was actually on, on a trip with you guys when I got this message. And it's from a DJ from Ohio. And, you know, he sent me a really amazing message, um, you know, telling me, you know, and basically he said, the likelihood of you reading this, uh, I understand there's a high unlikelihood that you'll read this. Uh, but I'm a, I'm a DJ from Youngstown, Ohio, your hometown. I'm, I'm 40 and I've been DJing for 20 years. I'm good friends with a mutual friend brand. Um, I'd love to prove myself to you and, and be a valuable asset. And I'm confident that I just need a shot. And, and please let me know how I can go about making this happen. And thank you for your time. And, and I pretty much got that on the trip. I'm out there visiting you guys. And I automatically replied. And I said, you know, thank you for the message. You know, um, you know, he had thought I was still at the previous company I was with. And I said, I'm no longer there, but I'm working on a project and it won't be open for the next year. But if you see anything in the meantime that you're interested in, use me as a referral. Let me know. I'll reach out to someone. And I was inspired by the fact that he wanted he had done everything he could do there and wanted to come out to Vegas and wanted to test his craft. And the, the saddest part of this story is is he's actually someone who passed away from COVID. And I didn't realize it until a friend posted something and I realized the connection. And really just wanna, you know, obviously dedicate this to him because as we got closer into the process, he was someone that I would have brought out here, given him a um, an audition, I guess you would say, at one of the spaces. And again, the even the message he sent to me, and again, there's certain times in our lives that we put messages out that are very vulnerable. And, you know, he, he, he might have been, you know, the night he sent this message, he's sitting there probably thinking, is this guy even going to reply? And uh, honestly, I automatically reply, replied. And it really it hit me in a weird way to know he had passed and know he had passed to COVID. Because again, in, in my heart and my mind, I knew that, I was going to reach back out to him as we approached the opening and put an opportunity in front of him. You know, I'd actually gone on his, his Facebook and I had talked to people from back home and, and everyone said amazing things, positive energy. So, you know, uh, DJ Fish, you know, Steve Fish, like, yeah, they're, they're using the hashtag Fish Fought and, and I'm sure he did. And I'm sorry that, you know, this unfortunate, you know, circumstance and pandemic has, has taken him from us. But, you know, truthfully, I want to dedicate this, uh, this episode to him and, you know, Hopefully, um, hopefully when the club opens, maybe be on one night, I'll, I'll throw a few of the of his sets on just to just to, to feel to complete the circle. But again, to his friends and family out there, completely sorry for your loss. And again, that I, I've saved that message and I'm keeping that message because that's that's to me is is someone who was going after a dream. And I, I wish I would have been able to fulfill that dream with him. Well, Ron, thanks for your time this week. It's a key moment to move on. Um, we look forward to chatting to you next week, but at this moment, I think the most important message is for everyone to realize how lucky they are at this moment in time, if you have your health, if you are able to watch this, um, you're in a fortunate position and uh, we dedicate it to Steve Fish. Thanks for your time this week, Ron. Thank you, guys. Look forward to next week. Take care.